And that's it for the news. Now on to the dinosaur of the day, Elaphrosaurus, whose name means lightweight lizard, and it was a slender dinosaur. It's a ceratosaur theropod, also in the Avrostro group, and it lived in the Jurassic in what is now Tanzania, Africa. It was described and named by Werner Janisch in 1920, and the type species is Elaphrosaurus bambergii. It's mostly known from one nearly complete skeleton, but doesn't have a skull. And the type specimen was found in 1910, again, by Werner Janinch, as well as I. Salem, H. Breck, and Parkinson. And it's now in the Humboldt Museum in Berlin, Germany. It was first classified as a C. lurid, which was a wastebasket taxon for small theropods at the time. It was put in the Ornithomimidae family in 1928 by Nopska due to its light frame. Its limbs look similar to Coelophysis, and in 1990, Barsbold, Marianska, and Osmolska classified it as an ornithomimid. Carano and Sampson in 2008 and Carano and All in 2012 in a study assigned it to the genus Ceratosauria, and Limusaurus is now considered to be Elaphrosaurus's closest relative. Some fossils have been found over the years that were thought to be Elaphrosaurus, but are now considered dubious. This includes Elaphrosaurus iguidensis, which was described in 1960, with fossils collected in Algeria, Libya, and Niger. That included more than 40 teeth, caudal vertebrae, and a complete tibia, but they came from three different localities and are not the same species. There's also Elaphrosaurus gatiri, described in 1960 as well. That was found in Niger and consisted of a complete neck vertebrae, but it's now been renamed Spinostophius gotteri in 2004, was renamed. There's also a Laphrosaurus philtipitensis, which was named in 1995 after Phil Tippett, the visual effects supervisor who worked on Jurassic Park. This is based on tibia, humerus, and some metatarsals. But in 2005, paleontologists said that they were probably not ceratosaurid and were more likely a coelurid theropod, Tanicolagrius. Then there was also Elaphrosaurus agilis, described in 1972 by Dale Russell, based on pubic bones that Charles Marsh had named Coelurus agilis, which he thought was a larger version of the type species Coelurus fragilis. But in 1980, John Ostrom confirmed Charles Gilmore's notion that Coelurus agilis was synonymous with Coelurus fragilis, so Elaphrosaurus agilis is the same as Coelurus fragilis. It's a mouthful. <laughs> Elaphrosaurus was medium-sized, up to 20 feet or 6.2 meters long, and bipedal. It's about 5 feet or 1.5 meters at the hip and weighed about 460 pounds or 210 kilograms. It had a long, thin neck and a stiff tail, but it had a shallow chest compared to other theropods that were similar in size. It had short hind limbs, but its tibia or shin bone was longer than its femur or thigh bone, so it was probably a fast runner. It had three-toed feet and short, thin arms with three fingers on its hands. Dinosaurs that lived in the same time and place as Elaphrosaurus included the sauropods, Giraffatitan, as well as theropods, as stegosaurids such as Kentrosaurus, Iguanodontians like Tocellatosaurus. Other animals included pterosaurs and early mammals. Elaphrosaurus was too small to hunt sauropods and stegosaurs, so it probably went after smaller herbivores. In addition to Africa, Elaphrosaurus may have also been found in the Morrison Formation in the U.S., but small theropod fossils in the Morrison Formation are relatively rare in terms of we haven't found too many yet. In 2001, paleontologist Trier referred to the right tibia of a small theropod in Garden Park, Colorado as Elaphrosaurus, but there's been debate. In 2008, two paleontologists suggested that it was closer to Tendaguru than Elaphrosaurus. Elaphrosaurus and other dinosaurs found in the Tendaguru were mounted in the museum in Berlin after World War I, even with the economic slump and riots and strikes. Elaphrosaurus was the second dinosaur mounted there. It was mounted in 1926, and the first dinosaur was Kentrosaurus, mounted in 1924, and the third was Dicreosaurus, which was mounted in 1930 and 1931. Elaphrosaurus is, again, in the Avrostra group. And Avrostra's name means bird snouts. It's a clad that includes most theropods that have a promaxillary fenestra, which is an additional opening in the front of the maxilla. Gregory S. Paul named Avrostra in 2002, though Martin Excura and Giles Curry redefined it in 2007. Elaphrosaurus is also a ceratosaur, and ceratosaurs are theropods with more in common with ceratosaurus than with birds, though there's no agreed-upon listing of characteristics. The latest theory, though, is that it includes theropods from the late Jurassic to the late Cretaceous. 